Okay, we left off with um, explaining the United States and its push towards Japan and the strategy used by the Americans. That strategy was um, called island hopping. And we would pick our way through the Solomon Islands, which is south of Japan. And we'd work back into the Philippines. Um, and then we were working our way back towards to hit Japan. Um, <coughs> we had directly hit Japan with a bombing raid in 1942, in June of 1942. But we don't really start hitting them with any kind of consistency until June of 44, 1944. From June of 1944 until the atomic bombs are dropped in August of 1945, we are going to have continual bombing raids. And um, these heavy bombing raids were put against, as, uh, against the Japanese cities, directly against um, the Japanese civilian population. And um, <clears throat> in March of 1945, I believe it was early March, March 8th and 9th, um, we had what was called the fire bombings, where the actual bombings um, claimed more lives, uh, according to statistics, than the dropping of the atomic bombs. And that was designed to bring Japan to its knees to break the will of the people, and even that would not do it. So after a year of bombing, continual bombing of, of Japan, really um, basically leveling most of Tokyo, um, President Truman was left with the decision of <clears throat> invading and having to land actually in Japan and having to overthrow the Japanese military because they would not surrender. This is when he's going to be told about the um, possibility of us going and using a weapon that had never we had never had any idea about. The average person never had. It, uh, any knowledge about it was literally science fiction um, and it was the atomic bomb. We had tested one <coughs> in New Mexico um, in July um, of 1945. And, and, and let me back up just a second. Uh, we have uh, President Truman or President Roosevelt will die of a brain hemorrhage in April of 1945. And so he will never, even though he had been in office, that was his fourth term of being elected, he will never, ever see the end of the war. Um, remember, G uh, victory in Europe and uh, Germany's surrender does not happen until June of 1945, and Japan's will not come until August of 1945. So Truman comes into office uh, being little used. Uh, the two of them didn't see eye to eye very much. Mr. Truman and Mr. Uh, Roosevelt, probably as far apart as you could be. Um, Truman is a Midwesterner. <clears throat> he is um, from a hardworking small town uh, stock. Uh, Mr. Roosevelt is from the East Coast, uh, from money. Um, the two didn't necessarily even do much with each other. Roosevelt picked him as his VP in, in 44 because he thought um, Truman could bring him the Midwest. <clears throat> Truman had not even been in, in politics for very long. He had been a businessman. He'd been a failed businessman. And then he'd been a representative from <clears throat> the state of Missouri. And he will pick up and then get picked to be the VP. So when he comes in, we have victory within a month and a half in Europe, and then all of a sudden he's going to be told um, 
that we have potentially a weapon uh, that we could use against the Japanese that we've never tested. Then we tested it in July of 1945 in New Mexico. Let's stop the um, video here or the lecture here for just a second. And we'll watch a quick little video on the uh, demonstration of what happened when we detonated the first atomic bomb as a test in New Mexico. So let's stop here for a second. Okay, so we try this thing. Um, we, we detonate the bomb. We're told that it's successful, um, but it's in the middle of the desert. We don't have an idea of actually what it's going to do when we do it in a, in a population-based area. <clears throat> so we're really quite uncertain about how we're going to do that. We then are going to have to decide, well, where are we going to actually drop this, this bomb? And we want to drop it on some place that had not been hit <clears throat> all that much by the United States in its previous bombing runs because we wanted the Japanese uh, government and the emperor and the military to say, to see just how powerful this was going to be. So we had to pick a target that, one, had not been hit very often. Two, could not have been tied to the emperor. Um, again, the emperor is considered a god um, or godlike in 1945 by most Japanese. So um, after considerable deliberation between his cabinet, uh, the war department, and Mr. Truman, <clears throat> we pick a spot. And um, there's going to be two cities. Hiroshima will be the first on August uh, 6th of 1945, I believe, and then three days later we'll we'll drop it on a uh, another city called Nagasaki. And there was a great deal of debate that went back and forth between not only the military leaders, um, but scientists that said, hey, this thing is going to um, be so dramatic that it's going to cause the, the change the change of mankind, and many felt not, it was the wrong thing to do. Years later, not right away, most Americans in 1945 were, were behind this. Um, I don't, I think you'd find it overwhelmingly, the population, though they had no idea what was happening, <clears throat> would have been behind it. Um, but there was a lot within his inner circle that felt this was, was the wrong course. Nonetheless, uh, Truman came to the decision and came to it relatively quickly that uh, ultimately this would save both United States military lives um, and Japan's civilian casualties. Because in the long run, if the United States has to land and do an you know an, uh, assault, you're going to have a lot of civilians caught in harm's way. And he felt that was the better thing. But I, I don't think there's any mistake. In fact, uh, in years past, I've shown video of Mr. Truman explaining to the American public, and there's no, there's no doubt in his tone that he felt he did the right thing, that dropping the bomb was, was the right thing for America. And um, I think Americans would have, would have taken um, a really, really poor opinion of Mr. Truman if he would have decided not to use it. So... The first atomic bomb was dropped on August 6th of 1945 on the city of Hiroshima. Um, it detonated and uh, it obliterated the city. It killed 80,000 people in one single moment. Um, by years end, another 60,000 more victims died from radiation poisoning. And then thousands more will have died um, years later from defects or the deterioration of one's organs and that. And <clears throat> it still didn't have Japan come to the decision that we were hoping it would have. Um, they, did, they did not surrender. So three days later, we dropped leaflets again on the um, Tokyo and what we felt were the emperor, the palace saying surrender, or we're gonna drop a second one of these. And they didn't surrender. And on August 9th, a second atomic bomb was dropped on the port city of Nagasaki. Basically the same results. 
um, 80,000, I think it was 85,000 people were killed instantly and, you know, devastation uh, up to half a million, three quarters of a million people years later. And um, then finally, on August 15th, the emperors announced that Japan would surrender. Now, America has always and said the reason they surrendered was because of our dropping of the bomb. What is interesting is that the Soviet Union is going to take credit for uh, ending World War II because they are going to declare war on Japan on August 12th. Um, if you remember back at the beginning of this uh, lecture, um, we talked about the Japan going against Russia in 1905 in war there where Japan beat up on Russia pretty good. And Russia is now recovered enough after <coughs> Germany's collapse that they're going to turn and take um, some of that same frustration out on the Japanese. And so Russia will say it wasn't the two atomic bombs that made Japan surrender, but it was the fear of the Soviet uh, military coming after Japan. Um, whatever the reason, um, here's this godlike figure that's going to come over the airways and speak to the Japanese people directly. And you can imagine um, the results and the <coughs> utter disbelief of what you perceived and have been told for quite a while. Um, you've gone through a great deal of hardship. Um, now, all of a sudden, this voice uh, that you have been told and probably believed um, is God is telling you we're going to surrender. And that was a difficult thing for the Japanese people to take. Nonetheless, they will surrender in August of 1945, and we will occupy Japan and Tokyo after World War II for up to, I mean, we still have base there, military base, but we were there in full force up to, I believe, 12 years uh, later, we will help rebuild Tokyo and much of Japan. So there you have it. Um, World War II in the Pacific Theater and the results. Uh, America has now won in the European Theater and now we've won in the Pacific. And America is going to come out of World War II as one of two superpowers and the only country that to possess nuclear weapons. Um, and we'll talk about that more in the next unit, but that is, uh, this is America's economic um, status will be elevated um, as we were domestically not touched. Uh, a war to America in World War II was, dad was, you know, drafted or signed up and then he went away. War in Europe, war in Asia was devastation. It was it was your city, it was your school, it was your your ha your family, it was your home that was destroyed. Uh, totally two different pictures. So we'll stop there, and um, we'll pick up on post World War and uh, what that looks like in the next unit.